Once upon a time, there were three little sisters, Louise, Prudence, and Maddie. Their father worked his way up from nothing. Well, it was definitely working when we installed it. Are you sure that the pose hasn't come off? It's uh, round the back. Sorry? Look, I know this is a stupid question, but are you sure that you've actually switched it on properly? It should be like a little green light. Oh, yeah. He worked hard for his daughters, who grew up to be Louise, the perfect wife and mother. Is anybody going to help me? It's my birthday. Why do you always walk backwards out of the room when I'm talking to you? He thinks you're boring. Gap here, my foot. Gap from what? Prue. The clever one, the sensible one. Who went to university and got herself a proper job. Mm -hmm. who went abroad and worked in places nobody had ever heard of. it seemed to all concerned. We've all come together. Is that someone's oh. else? It's getting Gordon. Oh, that's my Gordon girl then. Yes. I still haven't had that doctrine fixed. Oh, we, we thought you'd fix it while we're having lunch. Oh, don't run me well. I'll get one of my lads. Nothing this girl can't do. Mum and Dad, I'm 43. Oh, my golden girl. Imogen, if you've seen your mother at your age, it was like bees round a honeypot. It's bollocks. No, it's oh. true. Uh, please tell me what the <coughs> present is. Mm. Brand. <laughs> Happy birthday, sweetheart. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. James, yeah. lovely. Yeah. Oh. oh, shit. Terrific timing. Jamie, send them away, whoever it is. Right. Now, are we going to light the candles? Oh. It's Auntie Maddie. Oh, God. Oh, oh. oh. She oh. Us. We oh. Oh. That she... I couldn't oh. believe it. Oh, oh. oh my God. Yeah, well, she always was a law unto herself. Oh. Yeah. Great town! You're enormous! <laughs> I've seen him for two years! Oh, happy birthday! I really wanted to be back for it. I, I didn't know when it was going to be uh, everyone. Well, uh, perhaps we should go home. Oh, a, le a letter would have been appreciated. Dad! But you didn't eat this in Wogland. <laughs> Maddy? Dad. Dad? I was only joking. We employ one of them ourselves. Oh, for God's sake. She's <laughs> winding you up. First class chippy. Nothing's changed then, has it? Very sunny disposition. It's still as big as it is ever. And a lovely sense of rhythm. Mom, can't you stop him? We're human beings, Gordon. Oh, Gordon, how is it? What's wrong with Dad? Do you know your problem? Ignorance and fear. I forgot the thought police were back. I'd better watch what I say. Anyone who's different Jesus, from you is... Manny, it's Imogen's birthday. Can we postpone the lecture on race relations, please? Sorry. I'm really sorry, Imogen. That's <laughs> okay. It's not like Mum with Dad. What? You two always having lunch together, and you're incredibly racist. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. And you're sexist, too. 
Naomi Campbell came on TV. Look, that's, uh, that wasn't racism. That was luck. Shut up, everybody! Birthday, darling. <laughs> He's called Skylar. Forgotten how to do all this. Being amongst all those savages. <laughs> Looking very gonna change, Dad. Oh, Mum. So what are you gonna do? Where are you gonna live? Someone's lending me a flat. How's work? You've just been taken over. Everyone's very jittery. <sighs> oh, it is so peaceful here. Everybody says that. They come down from London, they sort of fill up here like a garage. Robert does, too. Next morning, he buggers up again. He's always wanted to live in the country, though, hasn't he? That's because he's hardly ever here. How are you getting on? Fine. It's just... What? Nothing. How's... No. Nothing the same. Still? Still? Oh, I don't want to sound like an older sister, but shouldn't you? No. Hello. How was your weekend? Did you persuade him to go bungee jumping? I'm such a wimp. <laughs> How was your weekend? Fine. I went to my sister's in the country. Mm. Do you want to hop off? No, thank you. All right, you've got editorial at 10, mm. jackets at 12, and then you've got lunch with Elspeth Wilson. You see the Tuscan cooking? Yeah. I wonder if the world really needs another book about roasted vegetables. <laughs> no, but when has that stopped us? Do you want me to go at Luigi's? No, Soho has. She's coming all the way down from Huddersfield. She might want to bump into Angus Dayton or somewhere. Hi. Hi, Stephen. How are you? Fine. Um, Trish, could you photocopy those for me, please? Mm -hmm. Thanks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm. Mm. I didn't dare go out in case you called. No, I waited for almost an hour. And then they all came home. Smelling of chlorine. <laughs> oh, I wanted you so badly. I want to suck your fingers. I want to kiss the mole on the side of your neck. I want to run my hand up the inside of your thigh. <laughs> your shins. They're all stubbly. I haven't shaved them for a week. Say stubbly again. Stubbly. There you go. Thank you. So I'll see you later and uh, can you run me up a budget for that bulimia book? Yeah. Selwood Street invoice lot, please. Yes, I've left off the VAT. Ah, thank you, Pat. Yeah, here's your tea. Gordon, we must have a talk. What about that? Hi, 
Hi. Are you an editor? Yes, I am. Why? Wait a moment. Will you read this? Goodness. What is it? It's my novel. Oh, um, I'm non-fiction. Yeah, well, we're all non-fiction, aren't we, if you think about it. My address is on the inside. Friend mm. and Alan friend. And Brian said, can you just pop up and look at the layout? Yeah. Oh. Playing with fire by Erin Fox. Until that moment, Marina had only slept with men. Her first lover had been her brother Simon. Under the bedclothes, she learned his body like the most tender of exams, A levels through the bell of her fingertips. Remember what it's like to be in love for the first time, just wildly in love? Yes. You dream about them. Your heart thumps when you see them. That's what she feels <laughs> for her horse. The potatoes, mine have got some dreadful sort of blight. Story of my life. It's better, really. I mean, a horse doesn't criticize you in front of other people. A horse doesn't tell you you're getting fat. You're not getting fat. Tim, you are nice. Where's the peanut butter? Oh, sorry. It's okay. I'll get you some. This place used to be humming. It used to be a hotbed of gossip and intrigue. Before they built Tesco's. Margot wants us to close down. Oh, but you can't. Humming is the most exciting thing I do all day. Is it? Yes. Mum, I got it. I got the job. Oh, wonderful. I can start Monday. It's a door, so I just walk up and down, banging stuff on shelves. <laughs> Where is this? Tesco's. Good. Okay. Good. 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 adultery is you're always having to snatch your moments and it's never the right time of the day the people they live with get all the best times evenings nights oh nights as if they don't get enough anyway so greedy of them somehow they're stupid to me give him up ditch him find someone else yeah well you wouldn't say that if you were in my position i wouldn't get in your position no Everything's so black and white to you, isn't it? <sighs> Why don't you unpack? It looks bloody awful. I'll help you. What's the point? To make it look nice? I don't mind what it looks like. All right, then, so you can find things. Well, if I don't need them, I'll never look for them anyway. I always feel like this when I've been to Lou and Roberts. Like what? Like this. Oh, men! In the village I lived in, all the women had clitorectomies. I'm going to ring him up right now. He'll just be putting the boys to bed, having quality time. Lamps lit, gin and tonic. I'm going to ring him up and blow the whole bloody thing apart. Don't be daft. Of course you won't. How do you know? I'm your sister. Hello. Hi. You finished it on the train. You're right. Extraordinary, isn't it? So, that's what women get up to. Sapphic soap opera, but it could be popular. What do you think? Yeah. Listen, Prue. I can't make it tonight. You promised. Dan's got tonsillitis. 
Well, son's always getting tonsillitis. It's your fault for having him born underwater. That was Katia's idea. Yeah, everything's Katia's idea. Don't you have a mind of your own? She was the one giving birth. Must be because she's Dutch, all those canals. He's ill, Prue. Okay, I'm sorry. I feel guilty. You do? Listen, Stephen. All my life, I've tried to be a nice person. I, I was never jealous of Louise. I've worked hard and I've tried to please my parents. And now I sit at home feeling like a murderess, wanting to break up a happy family with two little boys who've never done any harm to me and who love their father. Well, not a happy family. Katya and me... No, are... shut up. She's got you, hasn't she? She lives with you. You and me, we... We have a half-life, creeping in and out. Two hours here, two hours there, snatch moments. Nobody can meet you, nobody can see you. Stephen, I've known you for over a year, and you don't know anything about my life. You've never even met my sisters. I did. Once. Oh, yes, Louise saw you from her car. <laughs> well, I want to meet them. I mean, let me meet them. Have a dinner party, invite Aaron Fox. That'll be a good excuse. You mean we can have a real evening, like real people? They can't close down. The village will die. Market forces, my dear. Don't market forces me. Robert, he can't afford the stock. Everybody goes to Tesco's because it's cheaper. Yeah. It's a vicious circle. Soon there'll be nothing left but a packet of tea bags and a box of bootlaces. Like Eastern Europe. Have you been to Eastern Europe lately? You don't care. Why did I marry a Tory? There aren't any Tories left, except for your dad. I'm going to keep on going there. Well, you can afford to. You know why? Because you're married to a venture capitalist, that's why. God, you're cheap. No, I'm not. I'm very expensive. Shut up. Take sugar, Mr. O'Connor. Hold on. When I'm finished. He must really like you. He normally fidgets out here. <laughs> We're up for miles and miles. You guys don't fly away when you're on a horse. It's like you're part of an animal, too. We are animals. Just animals. With clothes on. Yeah. Trouble comes when we forget it. I saw a fox and a heron yesterday. No, Bockham Wood. There's a badger set there. Badgers? Wow. Yeah, wow. Have to go at dusk. They come out and play. The thing about badgers, they don't lumber around like folk think. They're really light and graceful. Cool. How old are you? 16. I thought you were older. Really? How old? When you say something dumb like cool. It just means great. You should enlarge your vocabulary when you grow up. That's what your parents paid for. Bet you go to private school, right? It's not my fault. I didn't want to go. Anyway, I hate school. I'm hopeless at everything except swimming. Don't be angry with me. Save it for your parents. So where's this place you set, then? Maybe I'll show you. Do I have to get older first?
You videoed over Coronation Street. Sorry. You did it on purpose. And a toy boy, and we're going to live in Spain and go to nightclubs and drink Bacardi on our patio. You're going to do what, love? My needs are simple, Gordon. All I want is to put things in my kitchen cupboards and close the door. I want to have some doors to close, that's all. Yes, love, I do know that, and I'll, I'll do it for you. I Come. don't believe you. It's been six months. Dot, I've told you, I'll do it for you. Hello. Gordon Hammond here. In the, uh, in the woodwork? Yeah, well, you see, it's, it's probably dry rot, and dry rot is a, a fungal infection. If you sniff it, it'll give off a, well, a fungal-type smell. Or you could try, try poking the wall to see if it's rotten. Right. Well, uh, I promise you I'll get my lights around there first thing in the morning. Thank you very much for ringing. Dot, I've told you, I'll do it for you! Hello. I didn't think you'd make it. Mm -hmm. oh. mm. Hello. Yeah, come in. Um, could you open that for me, please? Hi. We met on the doorstep. Come in. Let's go through. Hello, do. Erin Fox. This is Stephen Forbes, our editorial director. Oh. And this is Madeline, Maddie, my sister. Hello. We're all very excited about playing with fire. Oh, great. Thanks. Has, uh, has Maggie given you a schedule? Um, I think I'm having lunch with her next week. Well, we'd like you to come along to our sales conference, you know, and meet the publicity department, chat up the reps. It's tedious, but necessary. It doesn't sound tedious at all. We want this book to sell, don't we? <laughs> Great. Most of our authors are too precious for the rough and tumble, and they start whinging on when their books aren't on the bestsellers list. Oh, no, thanks. I don't drink. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get some orange juice. I do. Since Miriam Media have taken us over, we've a lot more muscle, and uh, we've moved into spanking new offices. Great. Cheers. Cheers. What do you think of him? He's a bit pompous, isn't he? He's nervous. Be nice to him. And then I lived in the Himalayas for a while, photographing the Kalash tribe, which was extraordinary. I mean, the women are, are wonderful. Wonderful. They do all the work. And the men are... Um, Utterly irrelevant, really. 
Sounds like our editorial department. <laughs> what about this gardening business? Yeah, I started that when I got back with um, a lover of mine. Now an ex-lover. Um, I love it at the moment, but next year, who knows? Who knows? I like that. Well, I think it's a tragedy, you know, this need that we have to define ourselves so narrowly. I mean, most people are three quarters asleep. We neglect so many parts of ourselves. And you have a daughter? Yeah. I wanted a child, so I had one. Oh, just like that? Well, I had to screw somebody first. Yeah, but did he know why? No. Nope. Quite something, isn't she? Very opinionated and quite humorless. <laughs> Maddie, it's lovely to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. What are you going to do about Prue? What do you mean? She's so unhappy. She's so stressed. Well, Maddie... She's bloody uh, lonely, too, sitting here waiting for you to ring. I don't think we Are you we going to leave your wife? Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. Well, not for her, it isn't, and she's the one I care about. Well, it's she's all... She's too nice. She's always been too nice. I'm too nice. That's the problem. You're nice. Maddie? He says he's too nice. Don't spoil everything, please. Sorry about Maddie. I shouldn't be telling you all this, but they couldn't wait for us to leave. You know, so they could, you know, before he drives back to his wife and children. Oh, God, who cares? No, it's you I'm glad I've met. Really? dying to do that all evening. <laughs> Good night. Good night. You got my number? Give me a ring. Is it me? No. As evenings go, that's, that's on a par with my mother cooking her mince and telling you about my potty training. I've never met your mother. That's why. No. That's not why. Well, you will one day. I promise.
she did. <laughs> Good old Maddie. <laughs> Do you remember what she said to my German boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Is that where you meet him? Sometimes. It's a bit cold, isn't it? Yeah, you freeze to death. Adultery is really bad for the circulation. <laughs> He's smoking. Hello. Louise came up for lunch, so I right. thought... What's the matter? just been made redundant. Don't you dare call it market forces. He has to clear his desk by Friday. You want tights? You went to Red or Dead, yeah? Yes, I went to Red or Dead. If sacked, 20 of them. Sales, marketing. You want top? Black, right? Just to make a change. These horrible money men have taken it over. Get my CD. Oh, you vultures. Don't play it so we can hear it. They're absorbing everybody, or, or rationalising them, or whatever inhuman words you use. Uh, I didn't do it. This lovely old family firm that actually cared about books. Sterling, you only read hello. And people like Stephen, who've devoted their lives to literature, they're just expendable. Why do you care so much? Just because he's shagging your sister. Oh, they're not listening. They're too egocentric. Such a vulgar way of putting it. Oh, so, sorry, oh, builder's daughter. <laughs> yeah, but you went to Charterhouse. I know about him. He's called Stephen. He's got a wife with a funny foreign name. How did you know? I heard Paul talking to him on the telephone about last Easter. How many makes him suffer? Did either of you dig up any leads? No. I phoned. <laughs> yeah, in the middle of neighbours. Clear it up a bit, like the woman who had lent me the flat. Who re turf the lawn where it's gone all mossy. Right. You didn't really ask me here to, uh, to show me your garden, did you? Wonderful. Yes, yes. 